I painted the jams on the car. You see? Now it's time to start putting everything back on. All the panels, the deck lid, the doors, also the, the front end, the fenders and the hood, the front clip. Also got an inner fender wheel I got to put on. So we're going to take care of that. i probably put this deck lid on first. Go ahead and pull it out and get started. All right, I got the deck lid on. I'm doing this video because a lot of guys be asking me to do a video of how I line everything back up for us to put them back on. It's really no blueprint of doing it because you ain't gonna never get it right. The first thing you gotta keep playing with it until you get it right. But the main thing is starting back here start back where this door if you got a four door start back in on the back doors but i'm gonna start back here make sure this gap here right and then i work my way on up to the fenders the hood and the front clip but on this deck lid make sure you got some help because i learned the hard way i put a deck lid on i think on the box chevy i got it on by myself but once i got it on i had to do some more body work because this rod here you got to be real careful. You got to make sure it don't move because if it moves, it's going to puncture the top side of that. And you'll have to do some body work. So try to get you some help, though, if you can. But on these doors, you really don't need no help. I use a jack. I put a shirt or something on my jack. Then I put the door in the middle. Then I can adjust it up and down where I need for it to be so I can put the the uh, bolts on and the bolts gonna be 11 millimeter and I always good to have a ratcheting wrench make your job a lot easier you can see I tried to paint up the the uh, screw not the screws but the bolts and the striker he probably wound up getting another striker a billy striker but I just went on painting them up but that's what we're gonna do with this door Trying to get a shot of that pearl. Sun ain't really out. So you probably ain't seeing it like I'm seeing it. Well, this sign that though. It's trying to come out now. Well, let me go ahead and get this door on. Keep playing with it. I also had to move the the hands down and up, both of them. But I got the gaps right now. See, also closes, and open, easy. Got to lift the striker as well, and I put it on. I had to move it up and down to get it in the right position. Now I do the driver's side, then we'll move on up to the thunder. Both doors on. We're gonna make our way up front. Guess I miss with these inner fender wheels. I'm gonna replace this one too because he sent, well I picked up one from him when I was down his way. Cause this one helped bust it. So we're gonna put that one on. And the driver's side. I just gotta take this one off. 
But I got all the bolts for under the hood. Like with the ice, he had ordered it. Because he didn't have all his bolts, so he went on to order an under the hood bolt kit for the 7881 El Camino. We're gonna open up this bag and see what all we got. I see how they got a number here. I like that. One for the battery tray, two overflow, coolant bottle, and so on. All the way down to 32 ground strap at fender to left hand cruise control and right hand receiver drive. Let's open it up. We picked it up from Dixie Restoration. Port number 271380. So they got the bags numbered 23. Windshield wash the bottom mountain. It's number five. AC box to pry wall. 12. AC land mountain to receive a dry bracket. All right, we're going to get. What we need, mainly the hood, the hood, hands to hands, hood, hands to fender. We're gonna grab those right now. But first, we gotta get this in the fender wheel off. both in the thunder well zone I haven't snug the bolts I just got them loose in there I'm not gonna snug nothing until I get everything pretty much on it then I try to line it up then I start snugging it from here up and this kit didn't come with a lot of stuff it came with a lot of stuff that I'm not gonna need because this actually the factory stuff and it's been LS swap, so I'm not gonna need a lot of stuff. It didn't come with none of these here. Okay, my battery died, but what I was saying, it didn't come with none of these here. So I'm gonna have to reuse these and find some more because he didn't have all of them that he needed. But I got plenty of extra stuff that I could find put together. But I'm gonna have to put these on the fenders before I put them, put them on the car. Here go at the top here. I got this fender here where it need to be. Took me a while to get everything lined up. It's quite a few spots you can adjust. I had to put some fender washers up under here. I think I got two. I ain't got no washers up under this here. Then got two more inside the jam. You see, I got two washers on both of them. Then on this uh, core support, it was sent down lower than what it needed to be. So I had to go pick up some more washers to sit up under the bushes. So next, putting the other fender on once we get that situated. Then we'll move on up or it's the hood. Okay, I got both fenders on. I got my gap like I want it. As y'all know on the old school, so this bottom gap be a lot smaller than the top. So I got that taken care of. And I started looking at the in the fender wells. This in here don't look too bad, but this one over here look a hot mess. So I was thinking about taking them back out, scuffing them up, spray some satin black on them. Even though life with the ice don't ask me to do it, but it ain't gonna take much longer for me to do that. Then I might as well do this core support at the top of it. So let me let me uh, remove all this, take this radiator cover off, and remove the inner fender wells. Then we'll get started on that. Here we 
go. Also took the spring and the latch off the old hood. I gotta install it on the new hood. But I'm gonna paint these as well. And here's the inner fender wells. I'm just gonna take a maroon sky spray and scuff it up. But this here I might need to get a put a knife, clean that off first. Let me get the maroon scotch sprite we'll start sanding here's my maroon scotch sprite like i said oops i done dropped it down on the ground somewhere all right like i said i'm just gonna scuff it up get my corner off get a paint something to burn too I'm not trying to go all out with it just clean it up a little bit for them I'm gonna do the same thing on the in the fender. But I got some right here I need to remove first. Gotta put it nice. Look like somebody painted over some dirt. That's what that is. That's something you don't wanna do. I'm gonna take my maroon sky spray, do the same thing. Standing up everything. Now I just gotta blow it off, wipe it down with some wax and grease remover. You see, I got some old sheets covering up everything from the oval spray. Let me take it on the inside. Okay, these the parts I'd be spraying. The latch spring. I'm also gonna spray the headlight uh, buckets, whatever you wanna call them. You can see there was rest of that. He probably get some more, but might as well spray them since I'm spraying anyway. I tried to sand them up, but they was pretty much rusted out. I sprayed these yesterday with some spray paint, but I'm going to respray these as well. The hood hinges. And I'm going to spray the back side of the front clip. Spray it black. And here's the inner fenders. I'll be using some Uricam. It's a single stage. I just got to put the mixes i think four to one to one yeah four to one to one four part material one part reducer one part activator it's a satin black but i'm gonna spray a sealer before i spray that It'll be less scopes i gotta spread the satin black it's the spectro sealer 54 50.
here is one coat of the filler. I kind of like this here. I can actually leave it like this. To be honest with you. It's like a flat black. Let me take you on the inside and show you those pieces. It's coming on together, y'all. Let me cut this fan out first. These inner fender wheels, they still flashing as you can see. But some of it dry. Front clip. Most of these pieces here dry. All right, let's mix this uh, sand black up. I just finished spraying the last coat. Well, I actually put on one coat of the satin black. Here's the results. It's still flashing. It's not completely dry. I'll take you outside and show you the full support. Here we go. I'm not gonna put nothing back on until probably in the morning. I just let everything sit, harden on up. Then I put y'all back on. Okay, this is the following day. Now we'll install all the pieces back on. I'm gonna take you outside. I don't know if I told you before how I line the fenders up with the doors, but I'm gonna take you outside. Give you a quick rundown of how I do it. Here's what the core support look like after the paint. But this is how I line the fenders up. Like I said, once I get the gap, put the door on, get that gap right, then you gotta work on this gap. And how I do it, I usually just sit it up there, make sure the gap even from top to bottom. Then I put a, if I have to put a shim here, like on the other side I had to put two shims, but this side I didn't. It's just different. It ain't gonna never be the same on all G bodies, B bodies. It's gonna be different. It's just however you put that door on, how it match up. But I put a shim there to keep it in place. Once I got it in place where I want it, then I open the door 
make sure everything clear they don't start rubbing then you got two let me show you it's pretty much the same on all gym vehicles but you got a boat here and a boat there see i got i think i got one wash at the top and two fender washes at the bottom so i tighten those down to keep it from moving and should do that then you come up here like i said sometimes you might got to put a shim there but i don't have a shim on this side then you got one here as long as you got the door even with the thunder you can go ahead and tighten this down sometimes you might got to put a shim there in between this boat and then you also got one at the bottom here you can tighten up and then that's pretty much it right there then you can go ahead and tighten this down and you work your way on up to the course for it tighten up yet I just got them got the nuts ran not the nuts but the bolts ran now for the core support I haven't put the bushings in so it's gonna raise it up some but sometimes you might you might gotta put a washer at the bottom of it washer too to get it up high enough I think this side might be nah this is a little gap so I might gotta put a washer too up under the core support to get it in place you want to raise it up high enough so them holes they'll line up both sides see i got this side here where i need it it's not actually touching now but once i start tighten up the nut it'll be good on this side you can see it's a big gap so i'm gonna have to raise up the core support i got the bushing in you see just take a stick put it right there then it's like a hole here where it attached to so you're gonna have to land that hole up with this hole so I'm gonna put some pressure on it you see it's lifting it up where it need to be so that's gonna tell you how many washers you need to put up under the course not the course support but the bushing it'd be good to go okay I got the course support Got everything in place, all the ropes. I still can move the thunder if I need to. That's why I didn't tighten it up because I'm gonna wait till I put the hood on to do that. See, I got all the boats also down here. Nothing tightened up so far. Just snug. Now we'll put the hinges on. I also put some PB blaster. Use WD-40 lube up this area here i didn't do it before i painted it because you don't want to do it and then paint it because that oil and the paint ain't gonna mix so do it after you paint because you want to make sure this got some lube on it so it'll move back and forth like it needs to now we'll put these hinges on and then the hood the hood on I'm not gonna put the latch on or the spring on so I'll install the uh, hood and get it somewhat lined up okay I got the hood on also I've been adjusting this here I'm gonna have to go ahead and touch this up because I had to slide it over some let me show you you see this bar here you gotta line it up straight up and down with this here. It was over too far. 
So I had to slid it over. Let me shed it. Let me show you the gap on this side. All the way down. Pretty flush right here. But check this side out here. The gap good. It just, this side sent down lower. Let me show you how to address that. Let me pop the heat. Okay, in order to adjust that, you got a, you got this on both sides, one of these on both sides. This one here look like I need a new one, but this side was straight. But this side, you can either twist it up or twist it down. So we need to twist this up, the raise up there. Good. In position with this here. Well, as soon as I went to turn this one here, this one here done fell apart. Like I said, this one missing the rubber, so guess I'm gonna have to go over here and get the ones off my cutlass because I got some from my cutlass because I hate to just pull this one up it's gonna be nothing but metal and mess up the uh, bottom side of the head I'm gonna go over here and get the ones off my cutlass so we're gonna get these off these in good shape they just need cleaning up I can turn them off by hand Y'all bear with me now. This is another one of my projects I'm gonna be doing pretty soon. Well, not pretty soon because I got so many projects, but it's a old mobile cutlass. Can't seem to get it off. Y'all wait one second, let me take okay, it. I finally got them off. This is what they look like in good shape. Need to be replaced. All right, old spray we're getting closer and closer. See, I got this one on. I already adjusted it. Also this side. And you see, I still haven't tightened up none of the bolts. But let's check this hood. I still gotta put the safety latch on as well you can see there the gap both sides now what we're gonna do we're gonna grab that front clip and just put it up and make sure everything lined up then we can start tightening up from here back I think everything good now. I'm gonna start tightening up all the bolts. We're gonna lock these down first. Make sure the spindle don't move in and out because it's where it needs to be. Lock these down and work our way on back. Only thing left now is putting the front clip on. I'm not gonna completely bolt it down tight because I want a gap in between it. So when I paint it, I won't have no bridging going on. So I put the wheels on on the front clip and I cut you back on. Mm -hmm. 